Uh, good morning. Um, we're going to start the governance committee meetings. I'm going to turn things over to Adam Schumann, who will take the requisite legal steps to formally open our governance committee meetings. Adam. Um, pause for the phone for a second. Oh. Okay. I note that Todd Sherman, representing Mr. Robert Mahika, director of the Division of the Budget, and Eric Moster, representing Commissioner Jerry Boone from Taxation and Finance, are participating in the meeting via video conference from the New York State Division of Budget Conference Center at the Capitol Building, room 131 in Albany. T Todd and Eric, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Good. Uh, we have Marge Rogatz participating from Champion Office Suite located at 1225 Franklin Avenue, Suite 325, Garden City, New York. Marge, can you hear us? I can. Thank you. I'll ask for motions and seconds to call to order the April 14, 2016 Governance Committee meetings of the New York State Housing Finance Agency, the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York Mortgage Agency, the State of New York Municipal Bond Bank Agency, and the Tobacco Sub. Hansen Corporation. We have motions for HFA and AHC in seconds. So moved. Second. Motion for Sunny May in a second. So moved. Motions for MBBA and TSFC in a second. So moved. Okay. Uh, please note that. Let me just check the person, Mr. Diallo. Um, Stephen Weiss is the Governance Committee Chairman for HFA and AHC and will chair the committee meetings for HFA and AHC. Uh, Kenneth Fialo is the Chair for MBBA and TSFC. He's delayed, so Chairman Thompson will chair the committee meetings for MBBA and TSFC today. And Commissioner Rubin is the Chairman for Sunny May and will chair the committee meeting for Sunny May. All items are presented to each committee throughout today's meetings. These motions and seconds, as you know, will be used unless specific items call for a different vote or unless any committee member wishes to record his or her vote differently. For purposes of convenience and to make sure the meetings of the respective agencies go smoothly, items shared by one or more of our agencies will be presented by HFA AHC Committee Chair Mr. Weiss. Okay, there are six. Uh, shared items. Item one, the following minutes will be deemed approved absent corrections from members and directors. 46th HFA Governance Committee members meeting held on January 28, 2016. 43rd AHC Governance Committee members meeting held on January 28, 2016. The 46th Sony May Governance Committee directors meeting held on January 28, 2016. The 41st MBBA Governance Committee Directors Meeting held on January 28, 2016, and the 39th TSFC Governance Committee Members Meeting held on January 28, 2016. Uh, the next four items on the agenda are consent items. There will be no discussions on these items unless committee directors uh, or members so desire. Item two. Resolution reviewing and approving various contracts monitored by the Facilities and Administration Department, and this is for HFA, AHC, Sony May, MBBA, and TSFC. Adam. Uh, now before the HFA and Sony May committees is a resolution of the governance committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency and the New York State Housing Finance Agency authorizing contractual agreements for facility telecommunications and administration services assuming the first and second previously entered for HFA and Sunny May committees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motions are carried and the resolution adopted. Uh, item three, resolution approving the agency's information technology contract with Application Oriented Designs, Inc., and review of contracts with Housing and Development Software, LLC, RealPage, Inc., together with other IT-related expenditures paid with Purchase orders, Adam. Now before the HFA and Sunny May committees is a resolution of the governance committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency and the New York State Housing Financing Finance Agency reviewing and approving the continued retention of information technology contracts with application-oriented designs, Inc., Housing and Development Software, LLC, and RealPage, Inc., and approving expenditures under purchase order contracts with Systems Application Information Network and Systems Management Planning, Inc., Assuming the first and second previously entered for HFA and Sunny May committees, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Motions are carried and the resolution adopted. Item four, resolution approving contract with New York Press and annual review of marketing related contracts for Sony May mortgage products. This is just for Sony May. Now before the Sunny May Committee is a resolution of the Governance Committee of the State of New York Mortgage Agency approving the continued retention of New York Press Inc. for advertising placement services. Assuming the first and second previously entered for Sunny May Committee, all in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. And the motion is carried and the resolution adopted. Okay, item five, resolution approving contracts for the provision of legal research services and annual review of contracts with the New York State Legislative Bill Drafting Commission, and this is for HFA and Sunny May. Now before the HFA and Sunny May committees is a resolution of the governance committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency and the New York State Housing Finance Agency approving the continued retention of the contract with CQ Roll Inc. for federal legislative tracking services. Assuming the first and second previously entered for Sunny May and HFA, all in favor please signify by saying aye. Aye. The motions are carried and the resolution adopted. Okay, and the last item, item six, review of the agency's OGS goal plan. And for this item, we'll ask Wanda Graham to present. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all know Veronica Flanders, a member of my team. Good morning. Today's goal plan submission is the first for the Service Disabled Veterans Owned Business Program. This program is administered by the Office of General Services and began this fiscal year. The Service Disabled Veterans Business Act was signed into law by Governor Cuomo on May 12, 2015, and is governed by New York State Executive Law Article 17B. The program allows eligible veteran owned businesses to become certified, which allows them to participate in New York State contracting opportunities. Our task will be to analyze the agency's expenditures, identify areas of opportunity for service disabled veterans, work with the various departments in the agency to create procurement opportunities, identify obstacles that the agency may face in achieving the goal, and monitor and report on a quarterly basis to OGS. For purposes of monitoring the veterans program, the agency's expenditures are divided into three categories, procurement, development activity, and bond transactions. Currently, there are approximately 200 businesses statewide in the service disabled veterans portfolio, which will limit greatly the opportunities here at HCER. We've created an exclusion list, which is based on the absence of service disabled veterans in specific professional service areas. And this list will be reduced as the portfolio of veterans businesses expands. We've also created an exemption list, an area identified with no opportunity or contracts under $25,000, which are not subject to Article 17B. For the five authorities, we've identified potential areas of opportunity for service disabled veterans, and that is in financial advisors, marketing, commodities, technology services, and development. Based on the requirements of Article 17B, we are changing the 1% recommendation to a 6% goal for this fiscal year. You should have an additional supplementary budget page in your package that demonstrates how we plan to get to that through procurement and bond related. It's difficult to estimate development activity, yes, because it's based on awards and contracts after April 1st. That's my presentation. Any questions? The percentage, the 1% and the 6%, that's of total expenditures or a number of contracts? It's total agency expenditures, yes. Did you say you were increasing the goal to 6% of the total agency expenditures? Because the law requires us to put a 6% in our goal plan, realistically, based on the portfolio available, the areas that we see opportunity. It's going to be difficult to meet a 6%, but we're required to put a 6%. I was being realistic when I put a 1% originally. We'll have none of that. Juana, is there any overlap between or among the MWBE 
providers and the veteran? I mean, it's, it was completely separate. Separate programs, but there will be, we have uh, identified some firms that are both MBE and service disabled vet, but because we report the MWBE program to ESD, service disabled vets to OGS, uh, it's separate. It so is separate. there, a, I mean, there could be providers that count for both? Yes. Separate prices, ESD and, and OGS. Yes. With quarterly reporting, same monitoring requirements. Yes. Although I know the requirements are less for contracts under, I think you said 15,000? 25,000. 25,000. If you did uh, enter into a procurement with an eligible entity and it was under 25,000, it would still count towards the goal? I'm certainly going to report it because it's going to be <laughs> yeah, difficult to yeah. try to meet the goal, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know that with the um, MWBE certification, there's an income threshold above which this, the designation is lost. Is that, does that apply to the veteran? I don't, I don't yeah. we haven't seen that. Yeah, I haven't seen that yeah. in the, the law. Yeah. This is a new program, so this is a, First year it's rolling out, and I'm sure there'll be new requirements just as MWBE. True, but with your MWBE, that was tied, the, the income uh, restriction is tied to your, it's tied to the legislation. That's correct. Right. It would be in the legislation. If right. it's not, it's but it would yeah. be interesting to see if it's not. You know, we can re review it and see. Any other questions? Just one last question. You had said you're targeting just the uh, smaller, all affordable. What is it about the program that makes it hard to do 2080s or anything else? Well, it's the size of the construction firms that have been certified by OGS under the Veterans Program. As well as the number. Thank you. <coughs> that was Thank an information you. item. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was an information item. Uh, there being no unfinished business, I'll ask for a motion and seconds to adjourn each of the five agency members and directors committee meetings. So assuming the first and second previous stand for all the committees, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The motions are carried and the meetings are adjourned. The next governance committee meetings are scheduled to meet on Thursday, June 9, 2016 at 8 a.m. Thanks. Chairman Biala. Good morning, everybody. Apologies for lateness. Anybody who has any teenagers. Yeah, be Gonzalez. Who will be sympathetic? <laughs> what was the problem this morning? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got my attention. I think what, uh, the word temper comes to mind. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So. You'll uh, calm down eventually. Yours? Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one's a female. Yeah. Tends to be clashes with mom at odd moments for odd things. How old? Hey, me too. Yeah, Could we, we're going to call an executive session, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gets better. We have yeah. a lot to it, talk yes, about. Yes, can we talk about that? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, my apologies. <laughs> Shall we? All righty. So let's pull together to start the audit committee meetings of the five agencies. And Margie there? She was. Okay. B. Gonzalez uh, here. There she is. Okay, good. All right. I'm going to turn things over to Adam, who will take the requisite steps to open formally the meetings. Thank you. Um, first, let me note that we're introducing uh, Mr. Davidson this morning as the new audit chair for HFA. Um, taking the spot on that committee uh, that Commissioner Rubin had held. Also note that as part of today's uh, meeting, staff sent a special agenda item focused uh, toward the end of this committee on the relationship between the committees and the external auditor. And this will be as part of a series of sessions that will be conducted throughout the upcoming year dealing with audit committee issues. Um, as to attendance, I note that Todd Sherman, representing Mr. Robert Medica, Director of the Division of the Budget, and Eric Mosford, representing Commissioner Jerry Boone from Taxation and Finance, are participating in the meeting via video conference from the New York State Division of Budget Conference Center at the Capitol Building, Room 131 in Albany. 
Mr. Andrew Sanfilippo from the agency's Buffalo Regional Office at Electric Tower, 535 Washington Street, Suite 105. I'll ask for motions and seconds to call to order the April 14, 2016 Audit Committee meetings of the New York State Housing Finance Agency, the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York Mortgage Agency, State of New York Municipal Bond Bank Agency, and the Tobacco Settlement Financing Corporation. May I have motions for HFE and HFA and AHC in a second? So moved. Uh, motion for Sunny May in a second. And motion for MBBA and TSFC in a second. So moved. So moved. As items are second. Thank you. As items are presented to each committee throughout today's meetings, these motions and seconds will be used unless specific items call for a different vote or unless any committee member or director wishes to report his or her vote. Differently, note that Mr. Gallo is the audit committee chair for MBBA and TSFC and will chair the committee meetings for MBBA and TSFC. Mr. Nestor Davidson is the audit committee chair for HFA and AHC audit committees and will chair the committee meetings for HFA and AHC, and Commissioner Rubin will chair the audit committee for Sunny May for purposes of convenience and to make sure the meetings of the respective agencies go smoothly. Items shared by one or more of our agencies will be presented by MBBA TSFC committee chair, Mr. Bialo today. Righty, good morning everybody. Item number one, the following minutes shall be deemed approved absent corrections from members and directors. Adoption of the minutes of the Audit Committee meetings of a 59th HFA Audit Committee members meeting held on January 28, 2016, the 53rd AHC Audit Committee members meeting held on January 28, 2016, the Sony May Audit Committee directors meeting held on January 28, 2016, the 46th MBBA Audit Committee Directors Meeting held on January 28, 2016, and the 45th TSFC Audit Committee Members Meeting held once again on January 28, 2016. We will now move on to the shared items. The first item we have, and Steve Jopi, I guess, is going to help us with this, is resolution approving internal audits work plan for the fiscal year 2017. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> the item number two that we're going to ask you to uh, approve our audit work plan for fiscal year 2017. I've used the same format as I have in the past. You have four schedules. Uh, one is a schedule a calendar of events. <coughs> Third is our audit objectives. And then our fourth is a summary report, which gives you the hours we plan to spend on the testing analytical review to the controls administration. But before I go into this year's plan, I'd just like to briefly go over the results of last year's plan. Um, last year, the audit committee approved the plan on April 7th of 2015. Uh, we completed 11 internal audits and we assisted external auditors on their audits of the agencies, including uh, the Department of Financial Services, who did their audit of Sunny May. Uh, however, we did not complete the plan in its entirety. Uh, we have to carry a limited number of hours for the HFA multifamily finance audit into this year's plan. Uh, unfortunately, it just happened. But I, I would like to thank the staff for their effort and cooperation. Uh, this year's plan uh, is as aggressive as last year's. Uh, it's developed for three staff and myself. Once again, plan to do 11 internal audits. HFA, Sunny Bank, <coughs> three servicer audits, Bond Bank, and, <coughs> and of course we'll help the external auditors once again. Uh, this plan was developed based upon a review of internal controls, forming a risk and vulnerability assessment, and also uh, to having discussions with the management. So we're going to ask you to approve our internal audit plan for 2017. Steve, can I ask a question? Sure. Does Municipal Bond Bank include TSFC or no? No. Okay. You, you treat them separately even though one's a sub of the other? Yes. Okay. Very ambitious. Can I ask a question? Can I, have, can I ask a question? Um, when we're doing audit, like First Niagara Bank as a, a servicer or the, the banks, uh, namely First Niagara, what are we going to be, what are we going to be auditing 
them? What kind of scope of the audit now that they're in transition to being bought by KeyBank? Well, uh, we will be auditing our portfolio, so that exists even though KeyBank is taking them over. Uh, it's in the process right now, but we're concerned strictly with the single family, how they're operating, how they're dealing, uh, uh, handling them within our operating guidelines. Can we carry this again? Thank you. I thought you were going up to four, you and four. I'm sorry? I thought you were going up to, uh, when you said you had four people yourself and three. We're, we are in the process, but unfortunately it takes a, a while to get them on board. When did that start? Uh, the process has already started. Uh, I'm hoping that within the next month or two yeah. we'll have that person. So does that augur well for actually finishing this year's plan? Yes. Yes. We have to hopefully we'll exceed that, but uh, until the person comes on board, I will count on blessings. And the person starts when? I'm sorry? Do, do we know a starting date? No, no, it has to go through the process of getting approvals from various individuals. But you focused on one particular individual? Yes, we uh, offered her, she's a CPA, and she'll add towards that. Any further questions? Thank you, Steve. Adam? Now before all five committees is the resolution of the audit committees of the New York State Housing Finance Agency, the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York Mortgage Agency, the State of New York Municipal Bond Bank Agency, and the Tobacco Settlement Financing Corporation, reviewing and approving internal audits work plan for fiscal year 2017, assuming the first and second previously entered for all five committees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The motions are carried and the resolution adopted. Item number, three. Item number three on the agenda is resolution in approving internal audits debt issuance audit report. And luckily, you happen to be sitting at the table and this is yours to lead us through. Please. <laughs> yes, we, uh, here we reviewed the accounting records and systems of internal control for the debt issuance group. Uh, they are responsible for managing the agency's bonds and notes. Uh, they also provide technical advice for existing bond issues and uh, special purpose bonds. They do work closely with the legal department and staff as well as the underwriters, underwriters council, and tax council. They are functionally responsible for uh, mortgage documents, uh, cash flow analysis, pricing of bonds and closings, uh, bond rating agencies, and tax issues. Uh, there's six people that are in the group and they report to the president of finance and development and for fiscal year 2014 they issued approximately 3.7 billion dollars in bonds since our last audit legislation has been passed that allows hfa to finance multifamily rental projects uh, using unrated bonds uh, to qualify financial institution buyers uh, we hold the mortgage we're in the um, financing term and if the mortgage are awarded default uh, the mortgage is assigned to them and we call the bonds and pay them cancel them uh, for uh, since april of 2014 there were 23 projects that were financed for approximately 1.7 billion dollars in bonds our audit uh, included a review of three projects that included uh, mortgage document review cash flow analysis, cost of issuance, uh, underwriter selection, uh, as well as accounting transaction for my office. So uh, we were actually able to satisfy our audit objectives. There were two items in the report. Management has responded to them. We're going to ask you to accept the report and management's response. Any questions, Steve? Yes. I'm a little confused about the organization. This is the debt financing department of DHCR? No. Sorry. It's the financing department of the agencies, which is run collectively for all five agencies. Uh, 
run collectively? Run, it's yeah. one department for all five agencies. It serves all right, five agencies. Right, right, right. Okay. But this is an organization that is in the agencies. It's not in right. the executive branch. Right. Okay. I was a little confused because some of the wording was... I'm sorry. Please. Had me confused. Okay, that's very wrong. I see that management has responded to the comments. Everybody okay? All righty. Then, Adam, could you take it away, please? Hey. Um, now, before all five committees is a resolution of the audit committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency, the New York State Housing Finance Agency, the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York Municipal Bond Bank Agency, and the Tobacco Settlement Financing Corporation. Reviewing and approving internal audits, debt issuance audit report, assuming the first and second previously entered for all five committees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motions are carried and the resolution adopted. All righty. Next is item four, resolution approving internal audits, follow-up audit of 2014 audit reports. <laughs> it's, a little Just your, it's your day. Yeah. It's a little different type of audit than we normally perform. Can we go back to the audit reports issued in 2014 to see if management has implemented the recommendations and corrected the exceptions as agreed upon? Uh, we once again issued two audit reports in 2014, and we listed the titles in the body of the report for your convenience. Uh, the result of the audit was that we were able to determine that 28 of the 32 items uh, that were reported and implemented or corrected, so there were four remaining items that are outstanding, and we've listed them in the body of the report, and we've brought their status up to current. Uh, and we'll continue to follow through on these items until they're fully implemented and corrected. So we're going to ask you to accept the report and <coughs> I'm a little puzzled. So, I'm just going to ask these questions and, and uh, see where we go with it. I don't see any dates in here. These are 2014 audits? Calendar year, yes. 2014 calendar year audits. So yes. it's 2016. And I see four areas of comment and recommendations. And that I, would remain yeah. Yeah. And I don't see any. This is when it's going to be done. I see a future date, a dialogue, documents are in draft form, and for the fourth item, the internal controls, information technology, I don't see any comment at all. And I think that was one where the audit committee had a very long discussion about some vendor in respect of IT services. This must have been two or three years ago, or maybe it was longer than that. I'm not yeah. sure. You can refresh my recollection on that. The IT comment had to do with the steering committees. Uh, the, uh, and that's something that we recommended a year ago uh, in order to make sure that the agency's IT goals were met and that we were going in the right direction uh, in terms of the technology. Uh, and they have agreed to implement the committee. Uh, and it should be in the near future because uh, we've had, I've had conversations with them. Uh, and uh, I don't have an exact date as to when it's going to be implemented, but I, my guess would be within the next six months. Well, uh, my question, which is more general with respect to uh, IT, but is the same really with respect to all of the recommendations. I'm not seeing dates. Huh. And I, I don't know that we need to have a a tomorrow date or a next week date or something of that sort. But it does seem to me that since this is from 2014, there should be targets that are established that we can, I agree with that, that we all on the committees can kind of understand and stick with and, and sort of a, uh, uh, a, a test of whether we're really moving forward on this stuff or not. If you've recommended it and we've approved it, then it seems like there should be some sort of schedule or target date that's set up. So I guess I'm not very comfortable with this until I see some dates applied. Okay. And, and I'm hoping that that can be done in short order. And, you know, other than that, I don't, you know, you all seem to be pretty comfortable with what's going on, but I'm not comfortable with the lack of Understood. targets for getting things done for 2014 audit report okay. comments. Okay, we can go back and get targets. Can you do that? Sure. And, and, and maybe you can pass them out to the members of the committee. 
So I'm willing to approve this subject to you coming up with some target dates that are not in 2018 and 2019. Fair enough. Sure. So be okay with that? One other question. Sure. Oh, I, I wasn't trying to monopolize. Yeah, I just, no, no, no. we got to get this on schedule. Okay, sure. No, I, think it's, I think it's a great point. I think having targets and dates would make sense. I have one question about this. I read the back and forth. But, uh, it sounds like the recommendation perhaps has not been adopted uh, and uh, and it reflected the new management structure that's come in place really since 2014. I'm wondering if you could update us. Uh, the sort of correspondence ends at the management response in January, if I'm reading this correctly, saying there are you know, potential downsides and unintended consequences to following the recommendation. I'm just wondering if you could update us on the status. Because the, of the four, this one seems uh, sort of unresolved. Yeah, understood. Uh, yeah, we initially we recommended that the uh, uh, the, uh, the staff allocations be made based upon work performed, and uh, since that time they've come back and we had discussions there. There's some questions as to whether it's going to be meaningful or not. Um, I still stand by the position it is. Uh, however, we're still discussing it. They agree to look. Closely. Okay, so if you could come back to us and let us know okay. how that's resolved. Well, with at least well, with at least a date when you're going to have conversations, <laughs> and facilitate a dialogue in the coming months. Fine. I mean, really? Okay. So I'm prepared to Adam to proceed, assuming there are no other comments, and if there are, I'd love to hear them. But. I'm prepared to assume, with, to assume for purposes of this vote that we will have some acceptable dates coming back to us from Steve after his <coughs> communications with management in whatever way, and then we'll have an opportunity to shove those into the minutes as the dates that we've agreed, unless you hear something from the majority of the members at the, that are proposed. So with that requirement, the dates be set and brought back to the board, we have before the five committees a resolution of the audit committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency, the New York State Housing Finance Agency, New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York Municipal Bond Bank Agency, and the Tobacco Settlement Financing Corporation, reviewing and approving internal audits follow-up of the 2014 audit reports, assuming the first and second previously entered for all five committees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. The motions are aye. Motion adopted. All right, item number five on the agenda is resolution recommending the acceptance of the 10th Audit Committee's self-evaluation. Gary is going to help us through this one. Good morning. Good morning. At the January Audit Committee meeting, we request that committee members fill out survey forms to form a self-evaluation of the committee's performance, and we receive responses. This is for 2015. The responses <coughs> indicated that overall the members were quite satisfied with the operations of the committee. However, there were some areas of concern we noted with ratings of three out of five that were raised by some of the members. These concerns were consistently in the areas of the relationship between the committee and the independent auditors, as well as a review of the committee's charter. These concerns are related in that the committee's role in overseeing the independent auditor are described in the charter. As part of the education session on today's agenda for later this meeting, Alex, together with Janet Oberstein and myself, will be discussing both charter and the committee roles in overseeing the independent auditors to fill that out. But overall, like I said, most of the responses were quite good. Good. Any questions or comments? Mighty. Mr. Schumann. Now before all five committees is a resolution of the audit committees of the State of New York Mortgage Agency, the New York State Housing Finance Agency, the New York State Affordable Housing Corporation, the State of New York State Bond Bank Financing Corporation, except self-evaluation. The first and second previously entered for all five committees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Gary, thank aye. you for and thank you for responding so quickly. Motions are carried and the resolution adopted. All right, item number six, and this is for Sonny May. 
And this is a resolution approving Sony May's servicer audit of Everbank Servicing Group. Steve, you're back. The servicer audit of the <coughs> Everbank uh, Servicing Group. Uh, and here we look at the mortgage records and the systems of internal control for the single family mortgages that they are servicing as of August 31st of 2015. As of the audit date, they were servicing approximately 92 million in loans for a subsidiary of Everbank Financial Corporation that had about 22 billion in assets as of 1231-14. Uh, they are a third party servicer for the Bank of New York Mellon. Uh, they're also a full service mortgage group that deals with originations, acquisitions, and servicing of uh, residential and commercial property. Bank of New York Mellon is participating in the agency's bond indentures. Uh, payments are made through them. They're a black box operation or location, uh, and their deposits are FDIC insured. Uh, the result of the audit was that we were able to satisfactorily achieve our audit objectives. Uh, we had no items in the reports. Uh, items of the uh, immaterial nature were discussed with the management resolved. So we're going to ask you to accept the reports as a response from that management. Does anybody on the Sony May Audit Committee have any questions for Steve on this item? <coughs> All righty. Adam, I think it's up to you for the vote on the, for the Sony May Audit Committee. Now before the Sony May Committee is a resolution of the State of New York Mortgage Agency Audit Committee reviewing and approving the servicer audit of Everbank Servicing Group. Assuming the first and second previously entered for the Sunny May Committee. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Motion is carried and the resolution adopted. Not our eyes. <laughs> Item seven on the agenda. Steve, stay put, please. Resolution recommending the approval of the New York State Department of Financial Services 2014 examination report. Now here we're going to ask you to approve the response to that examination um, in accordance with Section 2429E, I believe, New York State Public Authorities Law. Uh, the New York State uh, Financial Services Group performs an annual audit of Sunny May to determine their net worth and uh, to see the soundness of their management and operating policies. Uh, this is a confidential report, and it was sent to each member of the state of cover. Um, there was uh, one item in the report, uh, and it's from previous year's audit, uh, which we plan to implement soon in uh, your future. Uh, as a result of this year's examinations, there were no findings. Uh, so we responded to that one item. We need to accept uh, our response to uh, Okay, this is for the Sony May Audit Committee only. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Schumann. Now before the Sunny May Committee is a resolution of the State of New York Mortgage Agency Audit Committee reviewing and approving the New York Department of Financial Services examination report for fiscal year 2014. Assuming the first and second previously entered for the Sunny May Committee, all in favor please signify by saying aye. The motion is carried and the resolution adopted. Thank you. <clears throat> Who do you think we're calling? The ghost calls. <laughs> That's what they're, they're turning. Those, those cool. Okay, this is item number eight. <clears throat> and this is a presentation on enterprise risk management audit with the emphasis on audit committee roles and responsibilities. It's for all five audit committees and Alex and Gary and Mrs. Oberstein are going to lead us through this. Bo Shaw's. As I mentioned earlier, the subject matter of today's education center resulted from our review of the uh, self-evaluation <coughs> forms that the audit committee members returned. One of the items pointed out on a few of the evaluations was the need to review the charters. Alex will begin this session with a review of the charters. Okay. Uh, so back in 05, we adopted the audit committee charter just like we did for the governance committee at the request of the authority's budget office. Part of the annual review requirement of the evaluation of the audit committee as well as the governance committee is for the committees to look at the charter and see if it still continues to reflect the interests of the committee. So we've been reviewing the charter really since 05 and we've never made a change to the charter. So 
Uh, I think it makes sense to sort of do a little bit of a refresher on what the charter currently contains and uh, for the committee to really test whether the, the committee is, is and the staff are matching up to the responsibilities. The charter really breaks into a four, it has a number of, of uh, requirements, uh, 14 slots, but it really boils down to four buckets. The first bucket, which is the one that's going to be discussed today, is the relationship of the audit committee with the external auditor. And so the audit committee generally has the, the power to select the independent auditor as well as terminate them, uh, set their compensation, and oversee the work of the auditor. They also, the committee is supposed to establish procedures for the engagement of the auditor. All that really the committee has done through the RFP process, the selection, the review, the setting of the fees. They also, the committee is also supposed to set the, the procedures for the hiring of, by the agency of employees or former employees of the external auditors. That has never happened. So we can skip that one. Uh, the committee is also supposed to discuss with management and the independent auditor the annual, annual audited financial statements. That happens with the committee, I think, uh, probably three times a year and, and caps off with the January meeting where the presentations on the results of the audit are made to the audit committee and to the board. And then the committee is supposed to discuss with management and the independent or aud auditor any audit problems or difficulties or uh, in terms of uh, the ability of the external auditor to deal and do his uh, uh, audit <coughs> in terms of cooperation from staff. Mm -hmm. That can be done confidentially or, or publicly. Those are the, the main sort of external auditor um, uh, audit committee uh, responsibilities. And the one that Janet and Gary are going to focus on today is the, the, the process of overseeing the audit, the role of the audit committee during that process. The second bucket involves accounting standards. Uh, the committee is, uh, is supposed to resolve any disagreements with accounting policies or principles. You review the accounting standards that staff is using and the external auditor is adopting and determine whether those are appropriate or not uh, and engage in discussions with, the, uh, with staff about that, essentially accounting standards. The third, which the committee has been very heavily involved over the years, is internal audit. The committee reviews and approves the internal audit staff functions. A lot of this has happened here today. I'm not going to go into detail. The committee really uh, selects, appoints Steve Chopi as the, as the, the head of um, internal audit, receives the reports, discusses them, uh, reviews the adequacy of internal controls. That's sort of the third bucket. And the final bucket it concerns any uh, malfeasance. The committee is supposed to be the repository of um, uh, actions by the IG or any other external uh, entities that are looking into uh, malfeasance or malpractice at the agency. And also the committee adopts and enforces the whistleblower policies of, of, of staff. So those are really the, the four main buckets, uh, engagement with the external auditor, resolving accounting standards, managing the internal audit process and internal controls, and making sure that procedures are in place uh, for the reporting of, uh, of uh, malfeasance at the agency. The committee has, uh, you know, obviously this can be expanded or revised in any way, and we urge the committee to review it and um, be happy to discuss either at the committees or in between uh, committee meetings. Okay. Anybody have anything that they want to chat about today? Just one question. What is the, can you say a little bit more about the relationship with the IG and how that, what's the mechanism to bring things to the board or for the board to bring things to the IG? I just, that hasn't been really that, part of the right, conversation that, while I've been here. Right, because it really, uh, fortunately, we really haven't had those situations. Okay. But the process is the committee is supposed to review and investigate any, any matters pertaining to the status of compliance with laws or regulations and internal procedures and refer those to the state ins inspector general as it deems appropriate or to the attorney general. Okay. And I'll just say we haven't had them on the public authority side. We mm -hmm. have had matters on the state agency side. I've, since I, my arrival, I've met with okay. staff at the IG's office, so we do have relationships there. Okay. I'm just curious. It's a tricky one. That's true. Mm -hmm. that there's the, uh, and there's a lot of additional issues that one doesn't want to discuss unless one needs to. Understood. Um, okay. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> okay. Um, as for the committee's role in more detail in overseeing the independent auditor, 
In the evaluations, the questions that came back with the three out of five were mostly the committee pre-approves all services, audit and non-audit, provided by the independent auditor, and the committee processes, uh, <coughs> monitors the process to determine that the independent auditor's partners are rotated in accordance with applicable rules. Each received three out of five ratings from a number of members. To address these concerns at this meeting, we will now discuss the Audit Committee's relationship with the independent auditors. It should be noted that many of these items are addressed in documents prepared by the auditors, distributed to committee members at the meetings that Alex mentioned. These are the engagement letter, the management letter, and the audit results book, which are distributed to members at various meetings throughout the year. An additional document, the management representation letter, reflects representations from the agency to the auditors as a significant procedure for the auditors to form an opinion on whether the financial statements are fairly presented. We will be focusing on some of the basic mandatory communications required of the external auditors to the committee which are covered in these documents. So a little bit of background, as you're aware, Ernst & Young serve as the agency's independent external auditors and have served in that role for the past six years. They've completed uh, six audits. Their contract was approved by the board upon the recommendation of this committee when, and when it was extended for a second five-year period last June. The current contract expires in 2020. The contract is reviewed annually, generally in June. Um, there was the item about the partner rotation. The current partner in charge, Lewis Roberts, who has presented to this committee a number of times, has been overseeing our entity as a partner in charge for the past year. When he has become a partner, he was recently became a partner at Ernst & Young. He is involved with the audit the whole time the agency uh, has worked with Ernst & Young. He was preceded as partner by David Milkowski, who also made a number of presentations before the committee, who has since retired. The partner in charge is mandated to be rotated every five years. And I had a recent conversation with Lou about that, and he's aware of that. And also to point out, Amy Wong, the senior manager for the past five years, who has also presented to the committee a number of times, has recently left Ernst & Young. Christopher Sullivan, who has been involved with the audit on a staff level for our entity for many years and is very well versed, he's really good, will be our primary day-to-day -day contact. So there's no, although losing Amy, you know, is in effect, but Chris is really good and he knows, the client, he knows our agencies very well. In general, communication should occur prior to the issuance of the independent auditor's report. The appropriate timing depends on such factors as significance of matters or corrective procedures. Many of the key items are initiated by the external auditors. So again, reiterating some of what Alex was saying, the key dates for communication by the auditors to the committee here at the agencies are September of each year when the audit plan is presented. So when Luke comes in and he just says, you know, we're gonna be auditing for the next year, and he focuses on what their primary focus that year will be. And it's an opportunity for committee members to raise concerns that they want them to focus on. Um, during the next audit if they think something is appropriate and should be covered. January, when the audited financial statements for most of the agencies except for EHC, which include the audit opinion, are presented to the committee for uh, approval of financial statements. And at this point, the management letter, which is basically their comment letter, where they're saying, you know, these are the things that we may have noted, and then these are management's responses, are presented, and other reports are presented for board's approval. And June, uh, when, the AHC audit commit, when the AHC audit is presented, as well as a single audit on federal funding is presented to the board also for approval. Okay, um, so I will be referring to some of the documents of which you have seen before to highlight key elements of the communication between the external auditors and the audit committee. This is to serve as a refresher presentation and additionally to encourage the audit committee if they choose to, to reach out to the external auditors directly with any questions and or concerns. <clears throat> so there are four documents. There is the auditor's service agreement, or more commonly known as the engagement letter, which the one I selected was dated October 13th, 2015. That has not been presented at this time because it's extremely bulky, but if you would like to see it, request it. The remaining three documents are the management letter, the audit results book, and the management representation letter, which Gary had referred to. All three of these are dated January 28, 2016, which is at the end of the audit period and presented to the audit committee. <clears throat> so highlighting some of the key objectives um, that are referenced in these documents. 
Starting with the auditor's service agreement or the engagement letter, this basically states the terms of the audit, such as an auditor's responsibility, limitation of services, and accounting principles. So it's divided basically into two main um, areas that I'm going to focus on, which is the scope and the deliverables. The scope would state the financial year end that we're looking at, the purpose of the audit, which is generally to express an opinion by the external auditors, and the application of accounting standards, which would be GAAP, and in our case also GASB, Government Accounting Standards Board. <clears throat> the deliverables by our external auditors would be to issue the reports expressing an opinion, expressing an opinion uh, meeting with um, the audit committee, and the annual audit services that they're going to be providing. <clears throat> um, the audit committee could be asked by the external auditors if they have any knowledge of any possible um, violations of laws and regulations, fraud risk, um, and then the audit committee would be expected to respond to these matters. This, of course, would be if you are aware of these at the time. <clears throat> also, the roles and responsibilities of those in management and how they oversee internal control effectiveness. The second and third documents that I'll be look, looking at now are the management letter and the audit results book. The management letter um, basically notes uh, the areas for recommendations and improvements that the external auditors have observed during the, their work. And the audit result book reflects the audit strategy, scope, timing, and approach. And the audit results book on page six of the one, the most recent one, <clears throat> outlines the areas of required communications that the external orders have to um, notify you of. Um, this does not mean they have found issue with these areas. It's just noted that they have to let you know that they've looked into these. So some of the areas are the timing of the audit, their internal control approach, which is basically analyzing the design of the um, internal controls so that they can prepare their audit procedures. So if they find the internal controls basically in good condition, they can maybe reduce their sampling or take a different approach. If they think that the design and effectiveness of internal controls is lacking in some matter, they will increase their audit procedures. That in turn can make the audit go longer as well. <clears throat> and also the materiality concept, which is based on their findings and what kind of response. Um, they also look at critical accounting policies uh, the most recent one <clears throat> was referring to pensions, which, which was presented in January of 2016 um, to this audit committee, and it was effective as of fiscal year 2015. Now, the audit results book does look into other matters, and as I noted, sometimes they say they present these, and they say the response was no issue, no issue, no issue. So if you see on page six, it outlines 15 or 20 different items, and then it tells you which pages to go to. And some of those, what they did find no issue with was fraud and illegal matters, related party issues, management disagreements, difficulties during the audit, and going concern. Um, one area of concern that has really come up with external auditors um, is illegal acts, fraud, fraudulent activities, and significant deficiencies of internal controls. Um, if the external auditors do find issue with any of these, they will present that to the audit committee. <clears throat> Now the fourth document is the management representation letter. That basically reflects the, our agency's knowledge, acknowledgments of various matters to our external auditors. And this is a significant procedure that the auditors need in order to form an opinion. So examples of these matters that are referenced <coughs> are management responsibilities <coughs> per pertaining to internal controls, significant assumptions which would pertain to accounting estimates, related party relationships, arrangement with financial institution, pension benefits, and new accounting principle. <clears throat> now part of the audit committee is to evaluate the internal auditors, uh, sorry, the external independent auditors. Um, that generally occurs during the hiring phase as well as during the ongoing relationship. Also, the quality of the resources in terms of the partners, the managers, and the experience of the staff that are supplied to us, and the services that they are providing to us based on their reviews, such as written reports received from the auditors, and if they addressed all the appropriate issues. Um, it's important also that the auditors keep management involved um, 
updated on relevant developments and issues that could affect the entity, as well as informed of areas needing improvement, especially pertaining to internal controls. It's also very important that the external auditors are independent in both fact and appearance, as well as maintaining objectivity and professional skepticism. And the final evaluation is, if you had to hire them again, would you? And obviously, we were happy because we're going into a second five-year agreement with them. Thank you. Comments, questions? Very helpful. Thank you, guys. The overview is really helpful. It kind of gives you the umbrella to see, so you can see what you're looking at. That's, I thought that was very helpful. So. We don't have to do anything on that. Now we have item number nine. Thank you again. Financial statement update first quarter of fiscal 2016. Third quarter of fiscal 2016 for AHC. This is an information item. Does anybody want to talk about anything? If not, then we can move on to motions to adjourn the five agencies, members, and directors meetings. Adam, can you? Take the vote. Assuming the first and second previously entered for all five committees, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourn. The next audit committee meetings are scheduled to meet on Thursday, June 9, 2016. Thank you.